So I got a question about soldering copper pipe. LKY asked this question. Do you just apply the solder to one hot area of the heated joint and it gets sucked in and fills the pipe joint or do you have to move the solder all around the heated pipe joint? So I'm gonna show you how it's done coming up next. Hi everybody, I'm Lee of CJ Drill, and I gotta tell you this, LKY asked an interesting question about soldering technique. And what I wanna say is two words that I want you to remember. It's called capillary action. Okay, now maybe you're thinking, well, wait, 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 Lee, did I, that sounds a little technical. But here's the thing, it's just a little technical, and I wanna tell you what it means. When you're soldering pipe, there is a tendency to use way too much solder, okay? And, and here's why, okay? When you solder copper pipe, it's got to be dry. You can't have any leaks, any water dripping, because if you do, it, it won't, the joint won't solder completely. And when you turn the water on, you're going to have a leak. And anybody that solders copper pipe you know what I'm talking about. That's the last thing you want. You want to do it right the first time because once you turn that water on and the pipes fill up, if you spring a leak, you got to drain the line and you got to make certain the line is dry before you start the process all over again. So you want to get it right the first time. So what people have a tendency to do is to over solder. I'm just gonna put a whole lot of solder on that pipe because I'm gonna make certain that it doesn't spring a leak. And what happens is, once the job is done, you may not have a leak, but anybody that will look at your work will know that you're an amateur. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to sweat pipe so that when you do it at home, it's gonna have all the air marks of a pro. So I've got my copper pipe here. I've already cut it and deburred it. In the event you don't know what deburring is, it's when you take a tubing cutter, and this part of the tubing cutter is a reamer, and that helps you to burr it out and get all the metal uh, shavings out so that those metal shavings aren't traveling into your water supply. So that's all taken care of. Now the next step that we have to do is this is a, a copper tube cleaner. I love this tool because it's just easier than using an emery cloth. Now we're just cleaning this pipe up a little bit. Even though the, the pipe is pretty clean, let's just be certain, all right? And this tool is perfect for doing it. Just twist it in the same direction. Uh, don't do it back and forth. It's unnecessary. So let's pull this off of here and let's take a look at what we got. And you notice you can see a little bit of a difference here between the clean section and the section we didn't clean. And that's what you want to look for. Now I'm going to set this pipe down. So what I got to do is I got to take my coupling here, that's my fitting, and I got to clean the inside, all right? And so I insert that like that and twist it just in the same direction. And we're just trying to accomplish the same thing, get the inside of that fitting, that coupling nice and, and, nice and clean. So let's take a look, can you see? So that's the way it looks clean. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a link in the description below to this tool so you can check it out for yourself. So I'm just gonna stick it in this vise here to steady it for me. And so the camera person can get a good shot of it, all right? Now next I'm gonna apply uh, water soluble paste flux. That's what that is and that's what it looks like. And I'm going to take a brush here, and I'm going to apply a little bit of flux, okay, to the outside of my pipe. I'm going to get, make sure to get a good, nice coating on the outside. There we go, that looks good. I'm going to have to make certain that I get some paste flux on the inside of my coupling. That's what I'm doing here. That's good. Okay, so I've got my pipe and my coupling on. It's fluxed up, clean. 
Now I'm taking, this is a solder here and it's lead free. I'm going to bend it out a little bit. I'm going to put a little hook in it, just a little bit of a hook. Because that's going to, what this hook is going to allow me to do is going to allow me to keep my hand away from the hot pipe as I begin to lay the solder on there. Remember in the beginning of the video, I talked about capillary action. Well, what that is, is this, okay? It will allow me to, to hold the solder here in one spot. And the solder will be sucked in. Once it's melted, it'll be sucked in to this fitting without having to go around the pipe. Because when you start going around the pipe with the solder back and forth, that's when you get solder all over the fitting and down the pipe and it starts to look really messy, okay? Capillary action is the ability of a liquid, in this case, the melted solder, okay, to flow into a narrow space, the narrow space being the gap between this fitting and our pipe. It gets sucked in, okay, without any assistance or opposition from any kind of external force, like gravity, for example. It occurs because of inner molecular forces between the liquid, the solder, the melted solder, and the surrounding solid surface, our copper. And the last thing you need is you need a torch. Now, you can use propane, but I like to use map gas. That's my personal preference. That's a nice flame there. So I'm gonna put it right there. Maybe turn it up just slightly. A little more, there we go. Let it heat up. Now I'm going to test my solder out and see if it's ready to go. That's really nice. That's a nice joint. Now you know what? I'm going to clean it off just a little bit with the little flux here. There we go. Just clean that joint off. And that's perfect. Okay, everybody, here's the joint we just did. And it's got a little thick band. That's fine. If you compare this joint here to this joint in the back where I took a pipe out of a, a wall I cut open, you can see the big difference, can't you? Now, with just a little practice, you can get it right. Don't worry if the first or second or even the third time you, you get a little messy. Don't worry about it. Just keep practicing. This is Leah saying you can do this. See you next time.